thank you for the kind words. And hi, everyone. My name is Hannah Samra. I'm 24 years old, and I'm a former student, student of the International School of The Hague. I am an author, an entrepreneur, and a politician. I am here today not because of my achievements, but how I achieved them. I am here today not because of my success, but because of my failures. I am from a country called the Faroe Islands. Most of the people don't know where it is. People think it's actually in Egypt, because, you know, it's the Faroes. It's exotic, it's warm. I have to disappoint you. Let's look. You hear me now? Where I'm from is there, the Faroe Islands. It's between Scotland and Iceland. Most of you know it's not very warm up there. I'm going to show you, to show you another picture. This picture. It was taken when I was three years old. It's a picture that defined me as a human being. And I'm going to tell you why this picture defines me. When I was a kid, your age, I used to love playing football. I used to love playing soccer. I used to love playing handball. I used to love playing judo. That was my life. That was who I was. That was my identity. Until I turned 14 in 2002. In 2002, I was diagnosed with a very rare muscular disease. The doctor told me that I had got used to the idea that I would never be able to do sports again. Get used to the idea that I would lose the majority of my muscles. In other words, I would have to change my identity. In 2003, my parents moved to The Hague. Just like the majority of you, my father received an assignment from a European corporation. In August 2003, we moved to the International School of The Hague. There were just a few problems or challenges, I would say. I had no friends, my English was poor, and I had to get used to this idea that sooner or later, I would become handicapped. And I have to tell you, it was very, very frustrating. Because when my friends play football in the schoolyard, I would sit with the girls. When my friends become bigger and stronger, I became smaller and weaker. When my friends went to play football on the weekends, I played football manager on my computer. As a teenager, that was very difficult. That was not the only problem. I told you, I am here today because of my failures. When I started here at ISH, I failed every subject there is to fail. You name it, English, maths, biology, physics, you name it, I failed all the subjects. And I had to get used to this idea that I was going to be handicapped. And in 2005, at the age of, what was it, 17? When I was just about to graduate from what's called IHSCSE, what is the equivalent to MYP, the teachers will not even let me to go to IB. I did not have the necessary grades. As you can imagine, that was very difficult for me. Because I had all those troubles, and now I was not even allowed to go to IB. Again, a failure. A failure, a failure, a failure. Until one day. One day, it all changed. I had one of my weekly tests. I think most of you know how they are. And my dad was going to call my teacher and ask if she could postpone it. Because mentally, I was not ready for it. Do you know what I told my dad? No chance. No chance now. I am going to do this test whether you like it or not. I was stubborn. Why? Don't ask me. I went upstairs, studied the whole night. The next day, I did the test. One week after, I received my grade. 
A plus, the highest in the class. From that moment on, I knew that I was going to become something. From that moment on, I knew that the past was the past. From that moment on, I knew the past was the past. It was just a distant memory of who I used to be. From that moment on, I knew who I was. That one. I would use this instead. Mind and reason. I would use all my efforts in studying. That's why I did. I was, <laughs> my ever actually, that was just before I passed um, IGCC or NYP. You know what's the funny part? The teachers would not even let me go. They would not even let me pass to IB because I did not have the, the necessary requirements or not the minimum requirements to pass. But somehow, there was one teacher. There was one teacher that believed in me, my English teacher. She told me that she let me actually go to IB on probation, three months. I had to prove myself that within three months, I would have to get 24 points. If not, they'll kick me out. That was the deal. Three months after, I received 28 points. I passed, and as you would say, the rest is history. In 2007, I was in this building, in these classrooms, among this staff, I was just about to graduate from IB when I asked myself this question. What next? What am I going to do after IB? That was my dream and I had achieved it. What next? It was in this school, in this building, that I told myself at the age of 18 that before I turn 25, I'll become an author, I'll become an entrepreneur, and I've become a politician. In 2011, at the age of 23, I passed all, achieved it all. Here, a few pictures. That's when I passed IB. That's when I started my company in April. That's when I became a member of the Far East Parliament in, the, in October. And that was when my book was published. I achieved all at the age of 23. Being a member of being a, a member of the Far East Parliament might not sound of much because it's a very small country. In the short time that I have been in Parliament, I've had the privilege to meet the Danish Foreign Minister, and I have had the honor to hear the Commander of Chief, the President of America, Mr. Barack Obama. Yes, we can. It sounds good, right? Maybe too good to be true? It is. In 2010, my muscular disease went from my upper body to my lower body, to my legs. I will start to fall unprovoked. And that's actually the reason why I'm wearing these shoes today. Because I can't wear normal shoes. And if I look three years back and see how it has progressed, it's not difficult for me to see what the future holds. In the future, there's a, actually a big risk that I in the future might end up in a wheelchair. And that is why I'm showing you this picture. That was a picture of me at the age of three. I started to carry that boat. I'm still dragging that boat, but that boat today is just my muscular disease. That boat, that was the, what defined me as a person. That boat is what defines us, us all of us, because we all have a boat attached to us. We have different destinies, different challenges, but we all have challenges. Some carry heavier burdens, some carry heavier loads. But remember this, no matter what the obstacle, no matter what the challenge, there is no one, there is absolutely no one that can tell you what to do or what not to do. There is no one that can stop you from achieving your dream, your, your goal, 
There is absolutely no one, there is no one that can stop you but the faith that you have in yourself. Thank you.